Hi, I'm Kara. Today, we're not going to offer solutions or introduce any skills. I will share what I received from a lesson I learned from Rika's laser sauce several days ago. It tells the application of fiber delivered direct diode lasers. As you know, Rika's is one of the most popular brand of fiber laser in China and they have been working in innovation and development of the forward of science and technology. If you want to know more on Rikas, please click the website in the description below and talk to them directly. Before we get into the main chapter, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give me your like. It really helps me out. Thank you for your support. First, we need to figure out the definition of fiber-delivered direct diode lasers and its advantages. Fiber-delivered direct diode laser is a semiconductor laser module that improves the laser beam quality emitted by the semiconductor laser through a special optical system and couples the focused laser into the fiber for transmission. It emits laser radiation with a wavelength of 915 nm around. Compared with other lasers, fiber delivered direct and diode lasers have many incomparable advantages. First, over 50 electric to optical conversion. Second, more than 100,000 hours working life. Third, capable of direct electrical modulation. Fourth, compact structure. Fifth, low cost. Let's see a picture. It simply shows the beam difference between fiber laser and fiber delivered direct diode laser. Due to its unique and comprehensive features, fiber delivered direct diode lasers show a very conspicuous performance in many industry laser applications. Number one, laser quench. It uses the laser beam to hit the surface above the transformation point, and as the material cools itself, austenite transforms into martensite, thereby hardening the surface of the material. Compared with traditional quench processes, laser quench has the following advantages. First, it will get a more uniform quenched surface, shows a fine green martensite. Second, the hardness is higher, generally 3 to 5 HRC higher than the induction hardening technology. Third, instantaneous heating. The heating area of the workpiece is more in almost no deformation. Fourth, it's easier to control the heating depth and the trajectory and to be automated. Fifth, no cooling medium, cleaner and more environmentally friendly. Sixth, for large parts or areas, there's no limited by abrasive tools or space. In which industries is the quench process often used? Like the precise reinforcement of gears, if high frequency quench is used, the deformation at the gear may be relatively large, thus affecting the accuracy, and many steps are required to process the accuracy. This adds time and many cost. However, if laser quench is used, we can perform local precision quench on a gear without reducing the accuracy. For products with special shapes and thin walls, laser quench also shows excellent processing results. We can control the hardness around 58 HRC and deformation below 0.05 mm. Number two, laser cladding is a new surface modification technology. Cladding material is added to the surface of base material and the laser beam will merge them to form a metallurgically combined addictive cladding layer. Laser cladding is superior to other cladding processes. First, the cooling speed is very fast and is easy to produce a relatively fine crystal structure. 
Second, coding dilution rate is around 3%. It's easier to present a relatively firm metallurgical structure with a substrate. Third, if high power rapid cladding is used, the deformation can be reduced to assembly allowed tolerance. Fourth, the selection range of powder is wide. Fifth, the thickness of the one pass powder fat coating is 0.2 to 2.0 mm. Six, area selective cladding can be performed and the material conception is small. Let's take a while to understand more on the coating dilution rate of laser cladding. From the picture here, we can get a simple formula. It displays a clear vision on the dilution rate. When the dilution rate value is too large, the possibility of cracking and deformation of the cladding layer will increase. But if the value is too small, a good metallurgical structure may not be formed resulting in the cladding layer falling off easily. Generally speaking, the dilution rate of laser cladding should be less than 10%, preferably around 5%. Number three, laser soldering. It refers to melt lead containing or lead-free tin material into the gap of the base materials to connect atoms. Is widely used in the electronics and automotive industries, such as the production process of PCB boards, FPCB boards, connecting terminals, and other products. Number four, laser welding of thermoplastics is also referred to as laser transmission welding or transmissive infrared welding. From the picture, we can get a typical process of thermoplastics laser welding. There will be two layers. The top one is capable to light the laser beam path through in no function. When the laser beam arrives at the laser absorbing layer, it will generate heat energy. In the meantime, the two layers are pressed together by the fixture. The heat energy is transferred from the absorbing layer to the transparent layer so that the welding areas of the upper and lower are melted and combined. It's kind of like a test I made before. It's engraving the glass by Faber Laser. If you haven't checked it, please click the video up here. But not all plastics can be welded very well. A chart here shows the possibility and the quality of laser welding. Number five, laser welding for mental. Just as the common fiber laser welding machine for mental, the fiber delivered direct and diode laser welding machine is exhibiting better in welding thin metals, like less than 0.5 millimeter. Number six, laser brazing. It uses laser as a heat source to heat and melt the solder to finish the welding process. The main feature of laser brazing is to use the high energy density of the laser to achieve rapid heating at small areas to complete the brazing process. The brazed seam is smooth and clean in an arc shaped transition surface can be got, so no subsequent processing steps are required. It's commonly used in the process of car roofs, in truck leads, etc. That's it what I learned. If you know more on such topic, please write it in the comment below. I'd like to learn from you. Maybe next video will be on your call. I'm Clara from China. I will keep my focus on more laser news and bring them to you. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you next Tuesday here on my YouTube channel. See you. Bye.